Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in again. I am Katie Batesman, the Content Director at She Can Code, and today we're discussing future cybersecurity trends that you should be aware of. TV shows and movies would have us think that cybersecurity is all hackers, criminal masterminds, and the battle between them and the good guys. But it's a bit more than that. With employees working remotely, businesses are facing an increasing battle to keep their data safe and networks secure. To talk us through cybersecurity and the trends we need to know about, I've got Gal Helemski, Chief Product Officer at Plain ID, with me today. Welcome, Gal. Thank you. Nice to nice to be here. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Can we kick off uh, the conversation with a little bit about yourself, please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so again, thank you for hosting me. And I'm, I'm Gal. I've been in the industry for, I believe it's nearly 30 years. Uh, oh. I start, yeah, quite, quite. You don't look like that, I must say. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I started uh, rather early when I was in the Israeli army. I, I joined the main computing unit at the time. I did some uh, computing um, uh, science uh, type of uh, studies. I was an instructor for computer programming. Uh, so a lot around computers. And uh, then once I uh, resigned uh, that position, I started off in the start. Israel. Uh, both, uh, both startups I started working with were focused around identity and access management, uh, which is which is part of the cybersecurity landscape, and obviously we'll touch on that later on in the discussion. Uh, but that's how if I started my career in uh, computer programming with very focused direction in cybersecurity, identity and access management in the startup community. Later on, I did uh, work as a consultant for some time. Uh, again, that area, cybersecurity, identity and access management. Uh, and eventually, I came to uh, fund Plain ID together me, with my co-founder, Oren Arel. And uh, part of what we do is with the understanding in the gap that we have today in the market. And again, we'll, we'll touch on that later on in the discussion. Yes, I, I mean, you're the first person I've had on here that said you um, started your career um, in the Israeli army. Um, that's the first first person I've had on, on here. We hear some interesting roots into tech, um, and that one's <laughs> a new one for us. And what's the one thing about computing at the time that, you know, you, you started in that area, was there something that attracted you to it? Did you see from the start it was going to be a great career choice? No, actually, you know what, and that's funny. I didn't want to go to computers. I didn't want to. Oh, we hear that a lot as well. <laughs> I, I really liked physics, physics and science, and that was my direction in life. And I was very upset. You know, when you when you join the Israeli army, you do all those tests and then they pick and choose the people to go to the, to the relevant directions. And I was selected to join this um, uh, this uh, this path uh, in in the army, and initially I wasn't fully aware of what it meant and what it required. Also, I had to sign up for quite a lot of years, so I wasn't sure at that time. I was, you know, I was young. I didn't. I I thought of a different career path, but I was very much uh, engaged, and it I found it fascinating. Uh, to be in that area, it's it's like solving problems. Eventually, that's how I saw that, you know, and that's what's so exciting in tech: the the, the ability and and the the option to solve so many so many uh, challenges and and um, and uh, to get the tools to actually do that. Uh, so so I started. I said, okay, I'm I'm going to try. I'm going to see how the where where that would lead me. And actually, it led me into a very exciting and great path in my in my life. So I'm happy I did eventually go in that direction. 
yeah, yeah it's it's great to to hear um you say that because I, I hear that so often ladies falling into tech I fell into the tech industry lots of people do and it's it's lovely that you describe it as you know it's just a place where you can solve problems because yeah. it, that's almost like a, a hidden secret isn't it you know <laughs> why don't more people know that that's what your job will be in in the tech sector um I think we we have a a, a PR issue in the tech sector um that not Absolutely. a lot of people realize what it will be like um also working in cyber security um would be you know a super interesting um career route uh anyway in in the tech industry so i'd, I'd love to um start our cyber security chat today with um can you give us a quick summary of what cyber security is and what it involves yeah absolutely so actually it's built of two words which are which you know together they make sense this is about security in the cyberspace. Now think about security in the real world, right? If you want, let's say you want to go to an airport, you have to go through several layers of, of uh, security. You have to prove who you are. You have to prove that you have a ticket to the plane that you want to access. And then within the plane, you can only sit in the seat that you have purchased. And you go through multi layers of uh, a verification of who you are and that you are actually entitled to do to to be there additionally in the background there is a, a large uh, portion which you do not see that verifies over and over again that that's where you need to be and monitors your activities and so on and that is security in real life now think about all of that in the digital life in the cyber space which which is which basically is more or less of the same right i want to access let's say my bank account in order for me to access my bank account in the cyber space my identity needs to be verified there needs to be some proof that my bank account actually belongs to me and whatever I can do within my bank account. Additionally, if I'm operating in my bank account, there needs to be continuous verification that I am still who I say I am and I, that I can do all those actions. So really, I think exciting space and, and that's what it is, impl implementing all those security controls in the cyberspace, that's cybersecurity. Yes, yes, sounds simple. I'm sure it's not, um, but also <laughs> it must sound. Um, it must be so uh, fast paced and changing because um, criminals must be, you know, always trying to to try something new. So it must be quite a fast paced environment to to work in. Absolutely. So so what's so challenging in cybersecurity that it needs to be catching up over and over and over again with the uh, uh, with the uh, new uh, technology and the all the uh, advantage um, in 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 that space like uh, uh, for example technology changes uh, from on premise type of technology to cloud and then there are all those data hubs which are now so commonly used within the cloud there is movement from big monoliths into micro or service type of infrastructure. So, so many changes and the security, the cyber security space needs to catch up over and over and over again. Actually, it doesn't need to catch up. And that's part of the challenge that we are facing. It needs to be it needs to be there even before, because if you're releasing a new technology, it needs to have cyber security already um, plugged into it. If it doesn't, then we are exposed, right? So, so that's what, that's why it's an ongoing type of activity that uh, needs to be in mind of all those involved in technology. You need always to consider the security aspect of whatever uh, uh, whatever you are doing. Yes, yes, which um, must be uh, one of um, uh, a huge uh, issue for companies to to keep up with and and to to always get on the front foot. Um, I mean, if that's that's one of the issues that they're facing, what are the cybersecurity issues that the other cybersecurity issues that businesses are facing today? 
So today, and, and prim primarily today, I think because, or not, not think, I, I see according to uh, to the notion of migrating from on-premises type of implementation into cloud implementation, the trend of working more from home, supporting more remote business, collaborating more between organizations, we do see that uh, traditional controls are less relevant and there is a more requirement to adopt the, uh, I'll, I'll call them the newer controls or identity and access management specifically, which was always there, but now it's more important. Why? Because eventually that's where you can implement security. When an identity accesses um, uh, an application or data or whatever service it, uh, it has access to, you don't always have those network boundaries in place or today you nearly never have network boundaries in place. So what do you have? You have the identity, you have whatever the identity brings with it, with him, and whatever you can implement into continuously verify this is who the identity is and what they can do. And that can also change. And this is really the most important um, uh, issue or, or challenge uh, companies and businesses face today. They want to be more uh, open. They want to collaborate more. You want to open your business. You want to enable. You want it to be simple. But with that comes more risk. And yes. you need to handle that risk. How? Understand the challenges which you face. Understand what you need to enable. And implement the relevant controls on that space which you need to have. And eventually it comes down to know the identity and continuously verify and control the identity access to the resources that you want them to have access to. That, in my opinion, is the greatest challenge today. I believe we also see that challenge uh, and the, the, the importance of that space by all those notions of one, zero trust, identity first security, or identity aware security, even the notion of list um, a uh, list uh, principle, same thing, right? It all goes comes down to the fact that you need to know who the identity is. You're not relying on any network metrics or anything that is in before, but you know uh, who the identity is. It's not enough. You need to also adjust the identity access and what that identity can do based on changing circumstances, like where the identity is accessing from, what the identity is trying to do. That all ties down to the same notion. Focus your security efforts on the identity. And, and a lot of this, um, as well, you know, businesses would have found themselves more at risk um, because, you know, the pandemic and suddenly everybody went home um, and, and they were working in different ways. And, and based on that, should, business, should businesses be implementing training to teach employees about cybersecurity? Because there are so many more risks nowadays than, than there were before the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In my opinion, that should be like a core training um, uh, in, in, in any organization, because today there is more which is done on the cyberspace. Employees are war that that becomes their primary working environment, right? And if this is the primary working environment, they need to be aware of the risks that involves in working in this type of environment. They need to be more caution. You know, it's the same, it's the same thing as you might think when you go to an office, you need to be aware there is a front desk and you need to present your ID and then you can access the gate. And sometimes there are fire drills because you need to know what to do in case of an event. That is the physical world. 
same thing in your digital world, in the cyberspace. This is now your working environment. So you need to understand how to act within that cyber environment. What are the risks? And if a risk presents itself, what should you do? How should you act? It's very yes. important. Especially if it's just you at home and you're not quite sure what's happening. Um, yes. A little bit of training, I'm sure people would really appreciate. Um, and obviously we we hear a lot about, um, you know, that we read the headlines about cyber attacks um, and, and we, we see them um, often. But should we as individuals be concerned about cyber attacks? I I believe we should in 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 several in self, several areas. So for one, us everyone as an individual has its own personal assets which are important to to them, right? And you want them to be protected. You don't want to expose whatever you have in place. Everyone today operates on the digital space, right? So you need to be able to protect whatever you have and you have also your information a lot in, of information is today converted to digital you don't you don't get every anything today on paper right you need to protect that because that is what builds your identity and you need to be you need to be aware and you need to be able to protect that uh, i believe it's very important so that's one aspect to that the other aspect is we are working in multiple places and we are supported and that would build our economy all those businesses and industries so yes obviously as individuals we want that to be um uh, cyber proof we we want to reduce a uh, attacks the same as we want that to be done on the physical world we also want that to be done uh, to be prevented on the uh, cyber or the digital uh, landscape I, I i think there is a lot of equivalent between our real world to our digital world and we we have the same concerns there and e even in the cyber world those are much bigger they have mu they can have much 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 larger effect we need to be aware of that we need to be caution of whatever we are doing so yeah it, absolutely it's, it's strange isn't it you, you when um uh, you, you uh, nailed it there perfectly about you know online attacks can have a bigger effect on you but you're right because it's not happening um to you in person you're not there you can't physically see what's happening um we can be quite naive in that sense that we yeah. make don't protect ourselves as as um as well as we could do and i think we seem to think you know it's always somebody else you know we've always heard a horror story about somebody else or it's usually a business um that gets uh, attacked and that maybe people won't go for individuals um but obviously you know any anybody uh, it could happen to anybody at any time um on that note what can we be doing to protect our data and privacy well, first of all, I think awareness. That's top priority in order to start protecting our data, in order to start protecting our privacy. And the, I think our challenge is that not everyone understand the that notion on a similar level, right? You have those who are more involved in tech and they have maybe better understanding and those who are a bit less involved in tech and they, kind of try to push that away you know I, I'll, I'll share a, a, maybe a funny story I don't know what happened to me with my my mother she she called me one day and she said um uh someone is uh, someone has texted me to get my Amazon code I got my Amazon code and can I send it no no you 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 can't do that why are you even thinking about sending whatever code you get you get to someone which you don't understand you you're not familiar with she, she told me well they are from the support team they want to help me no they are not from the support team they do not want to help me i mean just think about that would you give your personal id card to someone would you give your i don't know your bank credentials to someone no you wouldn't do that and it all yeah. starts with awareness Anything that is connected to your identity in the digital space, it's you. Don't give it away. Never. 
if it if it if it is attached to an operation or to a function which you can do it is connected to your data it protects your privacy never ever ever give that away or at least verify with someone which you rely on what to do and and yeah. and that's the first step awareness 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 you need to know what you're doing if you don't know ask before you do any action Yes, so, oh, that's great advice. Ask, yes, if you're really not sure, um, just ask before you and double check before you do something and then have that have that regret. I am that paranoid person that still goes in the bank and um, actually, you know, pays off my credit card in the bank. And I, I like to talk to the ladies in there and I'm pleased that my bank has remained open. Um, but you're absolutely right. There are certain things that you would do in person um, that, you know, perhaps we don't think about as much when we do enter the digital world, um, not all of us are that paranoid that we still have to walk in a bank and pay things off. Um, <laughs> are there any other trends that we should be looking out for? So uh, I believe that uh, because the focus is going to be more on identity, identity and assessment in general, and the need to, prov to provide more privacy controls, then we are looking into what is called decentralized identity as a, as a trend that would take us forward. Uh, it means that us as individuals would be owning, would be would have the ability to own our identity, our digital identity, not just our physical identity, and we would have the ability to control who can see what portion of that identity. I believe it's extremely important to enable us to move forward in that uh, in that space, which means we can operate with more confidence in the digital space if we have control over our identity, our personal data, and who we are sharing that data with. So this is a trend to be look um, to be looked at. Yes, yes, and as we mentioned at the start of this. Uh, the cybersecurity industry moves incredibly fast. Um, yes. So it's just businesses getting on, on the front foot there. Um, in terms of careers in this area, it is a very um, male-dominated um, area of tech. Why do you think more women should consider a career in cyber? You, you mentioned yourself that you came into it because you saw it as an opportunity to solve problems. I'm, I'm sure that's, that's a big reason for, for women to come in. Yeah, well, in gen absolutely. And generally speaking, why not? I mean, whenever you ask this question, why should women consider? My question is, why not? I mean, why men are considering to access this area? Because it's exciting, because you learn new stuff, because you have the ability to influence. So why not women? I mean, we can do just the same. There's, there's no difference, really. We, we shouldn't be afraid to try. Women are more afraid to try. They are afraid to fail. It's okay to fail because that's the only way you learn. You, you, if, if you don't fail, you don't, you don't try, you don't learn. And, and that's basically my message to, to any women out there who, who might hear this uh, podcast, try. It's exciting. It's a new space. It's an evolving space. There are so many opportunities there. Yes, you can solve problems. Yes, you can help to implement solutions. Yes, you can be at the front of the technology. So much to do in this space. Cybersecurity is really exciting. Because yes, you fight crime for a living. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, yeah, well, so many aspects to it, but yes, absolutely. It's exciting. Be there. Don't don't afraid to try. And for our listeners, you know, if they were considering a career in this area, where do you think they should they should get started? Do they have to be highly technical? Can I mean yourself, you took a, a very interesting route in. Where where do you think people should get started? Well, you do need to, to start with more uh, technology-oriented knowledge. I think that it starts in high school because yeah. in high school, you should be looking to learn the uh, 
um, you know, even if it's uh, not just computer science, it's not just computer science, but even more mathematics and physics, like more um, uh, uh, subjects which are relevant to the um, um, to that type of industry. I'm not saying that if you don't learn that you can't uh, you can't st start a career in cybersecurity because there's there's so many options there. You just need to say that on that. But I do believe that it starts in high school and what you may, what are your choices in high school? What do you choose as a direction? Again, don't be afraid to try and to go into that career path. I mean. If it doesn't fit you, you can always change, but it, it's easier. It's easier to start in that path and then change to some other than the other way around. That's that's what I believe. I, by the way, I do um, in the where I live in, in, in Israel, right? So where I live, I do encourage uh, uh, young girls in high school uh, to go to 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 those areas to choose more mathematics, more physics, more computer science in high school, just so they will have the opportunity later on to choose their career path uh, in that direction as well. They don't have to if they don't like it, but they will have the opportunity. The fact is today only a very small percentage of girls at this age actually choose to go in that direction. And there's no real reason why. The only reason is they are more afraid to try. Yes, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I love everything you just said there. And um, as somebody who doesn't look like they've been in the industry for 30 years, to our listeners, um, I can vouch for that gal doesn't look like she's been in it for 30 years. Um, <laughs> what was it about physics for you? Did you get pushed back at school being a girl that wanted to go into physics? Or did you have a teacher that really encouraged you to take up that subject? Well, uh, both, I would say. First of all, I had an incredible, incredible teacher in high school. Uh, she made it all so fascinating, really. So, But still, we were only, I believe, four girls in a full class of boys in physics. But it was exciting to learn that. I mean, I, I also did my, my uh, uh, first degree in physics and computer science because that's what I thought I wanted. It was exciting for me to, to learn that and to, you know, it's like discovering all those new areas and, and uh, understanding uh, how the universe operates. Uh, but eventually computer science and what I do today it's not physics, right? But still, it's around solving challenges. It's around, it's around understanding problems and solving them in a way that makes sense, that makes things simpler. Uh, actually, it's much simpler than physics, Simon. Yeah. It's nice that you describe it as exciting as well. You didn't, um, it wasn't a negative experience for you mm, and you were no. encouraged. Yeah. No, not at all. But I do agree with you. It's a lot. It's a lot. It has a lot to do with the teacher that you have, because not all teachers can make uh, things exciting. I mean, you can take the boring subject and have the right teacher in place. They would make it so exciting. And the other way around. So... <laughs> yes, I've, yes, I've experienced that. Um, we're almost out of time. I just wanted to ask you, do you have any advice for our listeners? Is there anything that you wish that you had been told when you started your career? Um, so primarily to have the courage to try um, and don't afraid to fail. It's yeah. just part of what you do. Uh, and also you need to be persistent. You need, if you have a goal in mind, and you know what you want to achieve, be persistent. It, it's not, it, it, not everything works at the beginning of first try. Um, so that, that, would be, that would be my advice. Know your path in life, choose it well, be persistent and don't be afraid to try. 
Wonderful. That is lovely advice to end it on because we are already out of time. So thank you so much, Gal, for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to chat with you. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thank you thank for you. inviting me. Thank you for, for joining us and for everybody listening, as always, thank you so much for tuning in and we hope to see you again next time.